So, so BitSensor is decentralized, mm. and, and the, the big boys like OpenAI are centralized. Mm. What, why don't we want centralized? What, why, why is decentralized a better option? Humans are greedy chimps, ultimately. Um, and so where there is huge resource, where there's huge capabilities, greedy chimpanzees will, will try and gobble it up and, and control it. Uh, we've seen that, this throughout human history. So if you were to, um, like, if you were to look at the, the, the highly probable trajectory, trajectory, yeah. trajectory of, say, OpenAI, and we get chat GPT five, six, seven, it will get to the point where it's it's AGI, then eventually ASI. But before that happens, it will be commandeered by the US government. It will be what well, already is a geopolitical super weapon. So now the future of humans, the, well, the, the new, new super weapon isn't nukes anymore, it's AI. And regardless of what everyone's best intentions are, the US government will not let China have a better AI than the US. And at the moment, the US's best hope is open AI, because they won't get, be able to get control of Elon's XAI. And therefore, the US government will have majority control over, uh, like, oversight of open AI. And so it becomes George Orwell's worst nightmare of a tool. So this is the, the very dystopian look. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that has taken a dark turn. <laughs> but there is a you know, a, a less sort of scary outcome that um, if if Bitcoin is the answer to central banks' constant currency expansion, and, it, you know, Bitcoin is the the, no, the financial Noah's Ark to, to central banks, well, BitTensor is the is the Noah's Ark to centralized for-profit AI. I heard a, heard a, good, uh, a good explanation of this, actually, on the way here. I was listening to TauPod mm -hmm. with, with uh, James and JJ. And I can't remember which one it was. I think it was probably JJ. And he said that if you want to look at the difference between centralized and decentralized, think back to when uh, to, to make any sort of content, you had to create a pilot and you needed all of the kit and you needed someone to give you mm. the green light and someone needed to fund it. And think about how much content was created then and the quality of that content and how much of it you were interested in versus now in this kind of post YouTube landscape where YouTube is permissionless, it's mm. decentralized. All of the content on there, you, you can put some up, we could put this up on, on YouTube. There's a lot more content, and yeah. there's a lot more content that you're interested in, whether it's from people that you're interested in or on really niche, really niche topics that you are in, interested in, mm. bit tensor stuff. There's lots, of, lots more content being created because of that decentralized platform than there ever was when content creation was centralized. Yeah, and, and tech exacerbates that that movement like when you look at all of the, the the big unicorns out there like uber you know it it's the biggest taxi company in the world doesn't own any cars uh, airbnb you know biggest hotel company doesn't own any hotels so you see this disintermediation of pretty much any industry and like <clears throat> let's take the music industry at the moment let's just say 90 percent of all the revenue goes to 10 percent of the artists you know the taylor swifts etc well, now that AI is getting better at, you know, text to music, um, I mean, hell, I've created loads of songs and put them on Spotify for my kids and whatnot. Um, like, if you, ex you know, extrapolate this five, ten years down the line, you'll see that instead of 90% of the revenue going to 10%, you'll see 90% of the revenue going to 50% of artists. It will mean that music ideation is much quicker, faster, and you can, and, and also, you know, the full process will be, pennies you don't need to rent a recording studio for thousands of pounds an hour etc so i think we're going to see an explosion in you know musicians for artists you know um again with films like with generative ai we're going to see um tailor-made netflix equivalents so netflix and amazon prime they're going to be disintermediated they will have user content where someone in his basement or in his bedroom has created a new series and it's completely ai generated generated and then eventually um yeah and, and this will all be open source yeah i saw casey neistat's latest video last night which he was questioning where this is going to go he mm. described it as ai swap <coughs> obviously he's an, he's an old, moment, yeah. old school creator um and he was saying that sora 
you can just make anything you want. He said, but wh wh where does that go? Mm. It's like his natural endpoint was you sit down and you just type into Netflix what you want to watch. So yeah. I want to watch these two actors that are my favorite actors in a funny, thrilling, detective comedy horror mm. movie that's 93 minutes long because that's when I need to leave for dinner. And then Netflix will just make that for you and yep. you'll just watch it entirely personalized. Yeah. Well, at some point, everyone will have their own AI assistant, you know, like in the movie Her, you don't have to fall in love with it, but you'll have your own assistant, whether it's open AI or a decentralized version, it'll know more about you. It will know everything about you because it hears and sees everything you do every day. And it will begin to, it will have inference on you. So it will know what mood you're in, um, what what's likely to cheer you up, what you're likely wanting to hear or see or do in the future. So then it will have, and that will be perfect for, oh, based on this week or today, Simon, here's a really good box set for you. Or watch this movie, it will cheer you up. Watch this movie, you, you're going to love it based on your work. Um, so and not so that's good for, say, say tailor-made entertainment, but also advertising as well. It will know what to present you at the perfect time so it's not advertising. Yeah. Nice.